All right, race day medication really has been pretty prevalent for uh, over 20 years. I know uh, New York, as I recall, was the last to legalize Lasix, and I think that was about 92. So now we've got a whole generation of horses that are hooked, if you will, on race day medication. If you look at the total number of starts per horse, total number of starts per year, it's gone down every year. And it's pretty obvious to me what race day medication has done to the horse population. Well, when my father died in 1972, he had all his horses with Woody Stevens. And even though we sold all those horses in a paddock sale that fall, we kept a couple and we maintained our relationship with Mr. Stevens. When he retired in the late 80s, I went back and figured up that I had probably spent over 400 mornings training with Woody Stevens. And I'm not talking about one set or two sets. I'm talking about from the time the first set went out till the time the last set went out till we went over to the racing office to make entries. At that time, racing secretaries wrote 10-day books and a horse was expected to run every 10 days or two weeks. Now, that's, that is an impossibility. If you told Woody Stevens that he had to wait two or three weeks with a horse that was good between starts, he'd have a panic attack. Now, if you told a trainer that he had to run a horse back in two or three weeks, he'd have a panic attack for just the opposite reason. Uh, what I learned about training for Mr. Stevens was quite a lot, I feel, even if it just was through the process of osmosis. And the one thing that I did learn was that you didn't need race day medication. Woody wouldn't let a veterinarian in the barn unless a horse was three-legged lame or unless he had a real high temperature. Um, he ran Conquistador Cielo in the Metropolitan on a Monday. He broke a track record. He came back and he won the Belmont the, that following Saturday, five days later. Uh, the, we had a champion with Woody Stevens in 87 and he was a three-year-old in 88, 49er. He made 12 starts his three-year-old year. The last good horse we had was Blame in 2010. He made 13 starts in his whole career. So it's pretty easy to see what race day medication has is, is done to the thoroughbred. Um, the trainers of today might tell you that, well, the horses are too soft and there's no way that you can run them back that quick. Really, I probably wouldn't argue that point, but isn't the reason that they're so soft is because we've used all this medication for over a generation? I mean, to me, that is the crux of the matter. And if we keep going the way we're going, it, another generation goes by, it's gonna be an even worse problem than what it is right now. As far as what public perception is of Lasix and race day medication, I don't think you really need to look any further than uh, it was the Friday before the Belmont last year. Scott Pelley on the CBS Evening News teased an upcoming segment with this bite. When we get back from break, we're going to talk about a race being run tomorrow, which every contestant is on performance enhancing drugs. And then they went to commercial and they came back and Scott Pelley talked about the Belmont that was being run in Elmont, New York tomorrow. 13 participants, every one of them on, on uh, performance enhancing drug Lasix. So that's what's being broadcast to the public and that's what they think and really I don't blame them.